One Hit Wonderland, where we take a look at bands and artists known for only one song. And today, I want to listen to some rock and roll. No, damn it, I said some rock and roll. Some real rock and roll. Rock and roll you can blast out of your burnt orange muscle car and let your mullet whip by in the breeze. So today, we're going to listen to a nice thick slab of southern fried hard boogieing rock music. With like guitar and everything. Eat that, Imagine Dragons. Yeah, turn it up. This is the pinnacle of 70s southern blues mullet boogie rock. Although I guess this song predates mullets by a few years, judging by this man's glorious feathered hair. But yeah, it's the best. Slow Ride? Never did it for me. Mississippi Queen? Take it or leave it. Smoking in the boys' room? Pass. No, for me, the real high point of this genre is rock and roll Hoochie Coo, the glorious only hit from unfairly forgotten guitar god Rick Derringer. And yet, unless you were there at the time, or you obsessively listened to the Days and Confused soundtrack, you might not know this song at all. I don't think it ever became a classic rock staple the way Feel Like Making Love or you ain't seen nothing yet did, both inferior songs. How did that happen? This song ranked as high as number 23 in the spring of 1974, at a time when the Hot 100 was mostly things like sunshine on my shoulders. If it was that popular, how could it have gotten left behind? Well, here's my theory. Radio stations stopped playing it because it is in fact titled Rock and Roll Hoochie Coo. Yeah. That's, uh, that's a song title, all right. I mean, he's certainly not ashamed of it. They're just belting it out. See, Rick Derringer loved two things, rock and roll and hoochie coo, and he combined them into... Rock and roll, hoochie coo. Um... Okay, Rick Derringer is not technically Southern, he's from Ohio. Which is even better, real rock comes out of the heartland. And he started a band in the early 60s with the all-American name, The McCoys. And in 1965, when he and his bandmates were still in high school, The McCoys had a monster, massive number one hit, making Derringer the rare double one-hit wonder. Maybe I should make this a two-part episode. But that's extra work, so screw it. Anyway, the song is Hang On Sloopy. You probably know it if you remember the 60s, or if you've listened to like any oldies at all, or you went to Ohio State. It's about this girl, Sloopy, who everyone picks on because she's from the wrong side of the tracks. And also because her parents named her Sloopy. Sloopy, I don't care what your daddy do. I do care, though, that he named you Sloopy. What, what the hell kind of name is that? It's like a dog's name. Anyway, Derringer played lead guitar, and uh, check this out. Slow down, Satriani. That is some serious shred for a pre-Clapton, pre-Hendrix garage song. Most of these bands could barely play at all. If you got the guys who played Wild Thing to try and play this, their fingers would fall off. And here are the McCoys with their latest big hit, Viva. Okay, the McCoys are not technically one-hit wonders because they had a handful of other lesser hits. Like, here's their cover of the old Peggy Lee standard, Fever. It went to the top ten, and it sounds exactly like Hang On Sloopy. You give me fever, Matter of fact, all their songs kind of sounded like Hang On Sloopy. Anyway, after the hits dried up, the band went their separate ways, and Derringer joined a new band. 
You see this weird looking guy right here? This guy is Johnny Winter. Now his brother Edgar was the only one who ever scored any hits, but Johnny was a blues legend. Dude could play. In fact, he probably didn't need backup at all, but he recruited Derringer to join his new band, Johnny Winter and. That, that's it. Just Johnny Winter and. And who? And nobody! You don't get a name! I'm Johnny Winter! You're nothing! I kid, he did a lot of good work for the Winter Brothers. Not only as a sideman, he also produced all of Edgar's big hits. <laughs> Yeah, awesome, right? And he even got to record some music of his own. It's just finished an album of his own, which I had the pleasure of playing on. We're going to do a song from it right now. It's an excellent writer and guitarist and a good friend of ours, Rick Derringer! I just love the way this song builds. It's like a motorcycle revving up. Good start moving when it first took hold. So anyway, in 1973, Rick Derringer released his debut album, seen here with absolutely terrifying artwork. The first single, Rock and Roll Hoochie Coo, hit the top 40 and peaked in March of 74, proving once and for all that Homer Simpson was right. Everyone knows Rock attained perfection in 1974. It's a scientific fact. And what I think elevates this song above the average classic rock song is just that it is filled with hooks. Like that little riff in between each line. The grass goes to have the bar. But of course, the real hook is in the chorus. And if you really want to get it, you should listen to the original version. See, Rick originally gave this song to Johnny Winter a few years before this, and his version goes a little bit more like this. My god, it's barely the same song at all. Where are the backup singers? That's more like it. And you know, God bless the band who are yelling their hearts out there, but for the full impact, you really need to hear the studio version with the soul singers really belting it out. I, I looked them up. One of them was the backup for Stevie Wonder. The other two were cast members in The Wiz. And I mean, like, the good Wiz on Broadway, not the movie. So that's some serious soul pedigree right there. And that's always what put the best Southern rock over the top. I mean, without the backup singers, Leonard Skinner was just another grand funk. This is an exaggeration. Lay off Skinner people. But okay, let's get to the big question. What's with that title? Rock and roll, put you to. I mean, the song is such a glorious celebration of rock music. Why is he pairing rock and roll with the sound you make when you tickle a baby? Is it supposed to be like a rock and roll lullaby song? Which exists, by the way. Okay, look, Hoochie means sex. I mean, that was probably obvious to a lot of you, but in case you couldn't figure it out, it's old timey blues slang for sex. Rock and roll, giggity giggity. So it might sound a little dumb now, but back in the day, people would have recognized that it meant sex and or electric blues. So, you know what, laugh it up. 60 years from now, YOLO is also gonna sound like baby talk. Wiggle, that thing really knocks me out. Now, other than that, the lyrics are a whole mess of classic rock cliches. Which, for the record, were probably not cliches yet at the time. You know, Laudy Mama, Light My Fuse, all the good stuff. Jesus got buzz about this time of year. Go down that set, you beat me there. I, I know I pushed the not a rhyme button too often, but that that was pretty egregious, right? Hey, I got a question. Did funk mean something different in the mid '70s? Like a, a lot of these like guitar guys, they they were pretty proud of their funk. Sorry, it's just not what I think of when I think of funky music. No, I kid. You know, it's a song about meeting girls and listening to hard rock music. Exactly the stuff you want in a rock and roll song. And it makes that guitar scream. <laughs> this song has enough rock and roll for an entire career. But let, let's see how he followed it up. The second song only barely scraped onto the Hot 100. It's called Teenage Love Affair. She was a cute little thing about 15. She liked to make the schoolboys stare. It was a 
was a instant cosmic weed, teenage lover bear. Okay, with the climate right now, I feel like I should clarify. The narrator of the song is probably also a teenager. It's it's not explicit, but I mean, I'm pretty sure. It, it's implied. So it's not skeety. It's not. But I don't know. Rock and roll hoochie coo had like a billion hooks. I'm not I'm not seeing a lot in this one. I mean it's fast and aggressive, but it's not gonna set the world on fire. Although to be fair, there was an alternate theory why the follow-ups never took off. It was because they were from this album. This is not good marketing. This is the worst cover illustration I've ever seen, including the one for this cookbook. But nothing else ever really took off either. The word about him was that he was more of a live act, and his work didn't really translate to the studio. Or to singles, for that matter. He only ever released a few, like, separate singles. But here's one of them. It's, um... It's, it's just Hang On Sloopy again. And so I say now, hang on Sloopy, Sloopy, hang on. Wow, this is so much more annoying than the original. Cheesy organ and, uh... A marimba solo? You're Rick Derringer, man! Where's the guitar? This sounds like the Partridge Family. And Hang On Sloopy was only like 10 years old at that point. It's not like we needed an update at all, let alone a cheesy, bubblegum, cod reggae version. And he recorded a whole bunch of more stuff. Some with his self-titled band, others solo. But, you know, they didn't fly. Especially not when he tried to release singles for the pop market. I'm looking for something warm. I'm hungry and thirsty. Just gotta find some... No. No, this is not at all what I want for my Rick Derringer. Cancel this. Oh yes. In fact, I bet a bunch of you do know one Rick Derringer song, and it isn't the hit. And you've just been waiting for it this entire time. Well, let's kick it. Are you ready, brother? Tough shirt. Yes, he did Hulk Hogan's theme song, Real American. And yeah, this song is cheesy, and it's dated, but goddamn, does it make me feel proud to be from the US of A. Like, a lot of these rah-rah patriotic songs, especially the ones recently, have like this ugly streak to them. But Real American is just so innocent. It's, you know, it's so obviously from the part of the 80s where no one was thinking very hard. Hulkamania's gonna run wild, brother! Uh, and then he became Hollywood Hogan, and an entire generation lost their innocence. But anyway, besides that song, well, you would not believe it. He has had a hand in so much rock music for decades. For example, you know punk legend Patti Smith? Well, apparently him and her are close friends, and she co-wrote some of his songs. Also, his wife Liz was real close with Andy Warhol, so... He'd be tight with Andy Warhol and the Velvet Underground. I mean, what? Really? I mean, that's like finding out Marina Abramovich is tight with Papa Roach. He's also credited with helping to kickstart the careers of Steely Dan, who, you know, he played with a couple times. And a decade after that, he helped discover Cyndi Lauper. He's the guitarist on Total Eclipse of the Heart and Making Love Out of Nothing at All. Yeah, you think the guy from Air Supply can play like this? No, Rick played that. Also, and this is totally true, he produced all of Weird Al's albums in the 80s and played the guitar solo on Eat It. I swear to God, I am not making this up. It was just amazing for me to be able to work with Rick Derringer. I was, you know, always been such a huge fan of his. I mean, growing up, you know, I, I you know, loved the rock and roll Hoochie Coo. Derringer has two Grammys for producing Eat It and fat. See, isn't that great? And he's continued to tour and tour and play even up to today at age 70. And also in recent years he found Jesus, became an evangelical, got super active in far-right nationalist politics, and debuted a new version of Real American on the Alex Jones program. Well that's a downer. So much for fighting for the rights of every man. Man, this is not the note I wanted to end this on. 
let's say he deserves to be better known. Now, your average rock fan probably wouldn't recognize the guy's name, but they should. Then again, if he was more known, that Alex Jones shit would probably stain his reputation irreparably. Sorry, that, that just took the wind out of my sails. You know, no, I'm not gonna let it ruin his work for me. The man is one of the great side men of rock and roll, even if he became a crazy conspiracy asshole afterward. And rock and roll Hoochie Coo holds up. I will totally stand by it. Rock and roll Hoochie Coo. Okay, yeah, it does still sound a little dumb.